What is the kingdom of heaven like? When I was young, I imagined it to be like a theme park because my mum used to tell me it was better than anything I could ever imagine. And to me, theme parks were the best things ever. Now, maybe you could draw what you imagine the kingdom of heaven to be like and discuss it with your family. Now, I also have a challenge to set you, but I'm afraid this only works if there are three or more people within your household. So what I want you to do is keep one of you watching this and the others all need to leave the room and make sure they don't listen to what we're saying. Now, if it is children and parents, uh, can we please make sure it's one of the parents that stays and hears what the challenge is? OK, I'll just give you a few seconds for everyone to leave who needs to. Hope you're all having a good day. OK, I think that's long enough. OK, while they're out the room, this is the challenge I want you to set. In a minute, you're going to invite them back in one at a time. The first person you invite in, I want you to set them a challenge, something like doing 25 press ups. And if they do, they get a sweet or a biscuit. Then invite the next person in and offer them the same treat, but for only 10 press ups. And then the next one, invite them in and offer them the same treat for two press ups and so on for as many people as you have. At the end of that, you could ask them whether they think it was fair. OK, invite them back in, uh, maybe pause the video and set them the challenge and see how it goes. OK, now that you've done that, well, to everyone who actually did the challenge, you may have thought that the challenge was unfair. Well, today we are looking at a parable where some people feel that they have been treated unfairly. All right. Sleep tight. And we'll see you in the morning, OK? But I can't sleep without my bedtime story. OK, just a short one. <clears throat> there once was a landowner who went out to find workers for his vineyard. What's a vineyard? Well, they make wine. Can I have wine? No. You're too young. You know what? He was a factory owner who wanted factory workers. But I don't like factories. Fine. It was a sweet shop owner who needed sweet shop workers. At seven in the morning, he found some men looking for jobs. And women too? And women too. And, and a bear? What? No. There were no bears. Anyway. He offered them a job for the day, and he said he would pay them a day's wages for the work. A few hours later, he went out again and saw more men. He did a job. And women. And women. And uh... No bears! Anyway, again, he offered them a job for a fair wage, and they accepted. Towards the end of the day, he went out again and saw even more men looking for work. And women! And women, but no bears. Maybe one bear. No bears! He said to them, You also go and work in my vineyard. You mean the sweet shop? Then, when evening came, the owner of the sweet shop said to his manager, Call the workers and pay them their wages. The workers were, who were hired near the end of the day came and each received fifty pounds. That's a lot of money for one hour's work. It is. So, when the others came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received fifty pounds. When they received it, they got annoyed. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have paid them the same as, as us, even though we've worked hard all day. That does seem a bit unfair. 
Well, that's the thing. At the start of the day, they agreed that wage. So the shop owner said, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for £50? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Why are you jealous? Because I am generous. The end. I liked that story. Well, Jesus told a similar story, but in a vineyard. And with bears? Afraid not. Anyway, you go to sleep, and I don't want to see this light on again. Okay. Night night. Night night. You see, the workers who were picked up in the morning thought it was unfair that they were being paid the same amount as the workers who had only worked for, for an hour, which actually we would probably feel the same as well in, in our normal working lives. You see, with the kingdom of God, God wants to give generously to everyone because those that want to live for him, God wants to give good things. And it is all through grace, which can be seen as receiving something good that actually we don't deserve because we all make mistakes. We all do things wrong and we might sometimes think, oh, well, I'm better than that person. But to God, he loves us all and he wants to give us all really good gifts. We can all relate to that feeling of jealousy, that feeling of seeing what someone else has and wanting it, be it the uh, latest cool clothes or the latest gadget. Perhaps you have to have that thing and someone else has it and you just want it and you go, oh, I want what they have, not what I have. I'm sure at one point or another we've all said that phrase, it's just not fair. Perhaps we even go a step further and think, I deserve that. I deserve better. Jealousy comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes and it's one of the most normal feelings in the world because we're all constantly comparing ourselves to others. And we compare ourselves in all sorts of ways. Sometimes we compare ourselves in physical ways. We go, oh, they've got that thing and I want that. They have... Uh, they, they've got this house, they've got this car, they've got this cool thing and I want it. Sometimes it's really physical. Sometimes we get jealous because of other things that they have, gifts they have, talents. We go, oh, I wish I was that good at something. I wish that I was uh, good at football like they are. I wish that I was more like this person who's good at this. And sometimes we compare ourselves in what God's doing in our lives. Sometimes we look at other Christians and we go... Ah, oh, God's doing that amazing thing with them. Why doesn't he do it with me? See, as Christians, it's very normal to want and expect God to do huge things in our lives, to use us in amazing ways, to perform miracles through us, to completely change the world through us. And yet, it's far easier to recognise the things God's doing in others than it is to recognise the things God's doing in ourselves. It's so easy to look at other people and go, Oh, look at the amazing things God's doing in their life. Look at the way God has changed them. Look at the way God's made them so peaceful. Look at the way that God uses them for amazing things. Look at the way that God uses them to preach to people. Look at the way that God uses them as amazing prayer warriors. Look at the amazing things God's doing through them and with them. And then we go, why isn't God doing that through, through me? Why is God using them for more than they use me? Why has God given them those things when I want those things? And it's perfectly normal to want those things because we want to be in relationship with God. We want to, uh, to pursue God better. But God has an individual relationship with everyone. And God has an individual purpose for everyone. The fact that you don't recognise the things that God's doing in you doesn't mean that God's doing more in others. And it's so easy to fall into that trap of looking at what everyone else has and go, oh, but can't I just have that? God, can you do that through me? And in doing that, we make that individual, amazing, incredible relationship with God like the other stuff. We make it like something which we compare to others, like having the phone and the uh, clothes and the latest gadget and gizmo, and we go, oh, I want that. And it's not about that. It's not about the stuff. As one of my young people said in a youth group recently, you can always have more stuff. You can always have more money. 
but you can't have more of God. God's infinite. Once he's in your life, he's there. So don't try and compare the way God's using you to the way he's using others, because it's individual, it's unique, and God's using you in amazing ways. And it's easy to be jealous, because we have an amazing God. And when we have an amazing God, he gives good gifts to everyone. And he gives you good gifts and he gives others good gifts. And it's so easy to look at other people's gifts and go, oh, but I want that one. When actually God's given you something else which is in its own right absolutely amazing. In our story today, the workers were jealous because the owner had paid them all the same. And some thought they deserved better. But the reality of our situation is that we don't deserve anything. We don't haven't earned God's love. We haven't earned the gifts God gives us. And so us getting jealous about God's grace and God's love, it's just ridiculous. A, because it's infinite and never ending. And B, because there's nothing we could possibly do to earn it. So if you are comparing yourself to others, that's a very normal response. I think we've all done that. But don't neglect the fact that God is using you in his own way. God will do what he's going to do, and God will be who he's going to be. And he will do amazing things through you if you let him. But don't compare yourselves to others and go, oh, well, I'm not as big a part of plan as that person is for God. God's really using that person. Because God will, God will be graceful in the way that he wants to be. And God's grace is amazing. And because God is graceful, we can trust that he is going to use us in amazing ways. Because I think there's two people in that story who are mistaken. There's the farmers who have worked all day and think they deserve better. They deserve more than the others. And there's the farmers who have only worked for an hour. And they probably thought that they were going to get paid a lot less. They probably thought that the landowner was going to give them a lot less than he gave the others. And we can be in either of those categories. Sometimes we might look at others and go, yeah, but God's not going to use me like he uses those because they're really holy, they've been Christian far longer than me, God will use them noise. But that's not how God works. God wants to use you in amazing ways. So you maybe have a think about which of those two farmers you are. Are you sometimes one of the farmers who's jealous of others and going, oh, I want God to use me more like those, it's not fair that God doesn't use me like that. Or are you the farmers who you don't expect God to use? You're there going, yeah, but if I were God, I'd use others. Because God wants to grace both of those people with amazing gifts. Because our God is a generous God who loves you and he wants to use you. And he wants to give you good gifts. So, let's pray to end our session today. Dear Lord, we pray that we wouldn't get jealous of what you're doing in other people's lives. But that actually we would be able to celebrate with them what you are doing. Lord, thank you that you love us all and that you want to be using us to glorify your kingdom. Lord, would we be willing to do as you would like us to do? Lord, please please be with us all this week and help us to continue to get on with our families and our friends and keep us safe from the virus. Amen. Have a good week, everyone. See you next week.